So you got something wrong with your MacBook. Hopefully this video can help you figure out how to fix it. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. And today we're going to talk about troubleshooting these MacBook and MacBook Pros, especially the older models. And we're going to be focusing in on the like 2010 to 2012 range. If you've watched my channel before, you know I work on a lot of these. I do a lot of upgrades. And along the way, and down in the comments, and I love your guys' comments, I get a lot of questions, and I try to help out as many people as I can, and hopefully I've, I've helped you out at some point. But I've wanted to make a little video just to try to sum up some of the, the easiest to diagnose problems with these MacBooks. So let's get into the first one. So the first one, and probably the worst one, is going to be a, a power problem, what I call a power problem. So if you hit that power button, you know, you lift the lid, hit the power button, and nothing happens. No ding, no chime, no nothing on the screen at all, no noises, no, you know, disk drive noises. Then some, something's not right, obviously. So you need to start troubleshooting the power uh, circuit. So one thing you can do is make sure you plug in a charger to it, a known good charger. If you've got some other MacBook to test out your charger, that'd be great. So hook up your charger, make sure that you got a green light or an orange light on there saying that it's delivering power to the, the laptop. Then you try that again. If it, if it powers up, good. If it doesn't power up, then, uh, then you need to keep on troubleshooting. So if it does power up, then maybe the battery is just dead. Um, I've got a, a video on how to check battery conditions on these older laptops. Um, so maybe it was just a battery problem, and then you can just replace that battery. Um, but but maybe there's more than just a battery problem. So when you have power plugged into here, it's delivering power into the main board itself, and part of that is going to be powering up the laptop, and part of it is going to be coming down and charging the battery. So if it, if it runs with the charger on, then at least you know there's nothing wrong with the computer with the, with the main board itself. Because um, then if it's just fixing the battery, that's that's doable, that's not too expensive. If you do notice that it doesn't do anything at all, then you want to might want to pop it open and, and see what's happening inside. So inside these laptops, after you take the, the bottom cover off, there's always some kind of connector that connects the battery to the main board. And for most troubleshooting, you want to make sure you disconnect that first. In this case, we're, we're troubleshooting the battery itself. So you do want to make sure that the battery connector is attached there. Now for some of the models that are all the same, for some of the models that are a little bit different. So just do a quick Google search on how to connect or disconnect your battery for your MacBook Pro for your particular year and you'll find out how to do it. It's usually just a couple screws on this type and then disconnect the connector. On some of them it's just as easy as taking a, a spudger like this and just popping it off. So in our case, we're just testing to make sure that the, the battery is actually connected. So you want to make sure that it is fully seated and fully connected. While we're in here, go ahead and take a look at the battery itself, the physical condition of the battery. And if you want some more tips on that, I do have that video that has how to troubleshoot battery issues. That'll be linked in the comments below. But you want to look at the physical condition to make sure it's not, you know, ballooning out or pillowing and you know breaking some of these plastic contacts by doing that and at that point that's about as far as you can go on on testing out power if you've got a good charger on it and you think the battery is good and it's still not powering up then then bad news right it might it might happen to be something with the main board i've seen these where the battery can get so bad that even having a good charger hooked up and a bad battery installed it just won't boot up so in that case, it might be worth testing out, you know, for anywhere between 20 and 40 bucks on Amazon. Uh, you can get a new battery and throw it in there and, and see if it works. All right, so the next issue you may have, maybe you open up your laptop, hit the power button, and you hear it chime, but the, black, the screen just stays black the whole time and it never boots up. You never get the white screen showing that Mac OS is loading. In that case, I always say the first thing to test is the RAM and several things can happen RAM chips can go bad they can be installed improperly they can get loose uh, the channels themselves can go bad 
So let's take a couple steps to troubleshoot the RAM. So most of the time these laptops are going to have two RAM slots and there's going to be two individual RAM chips in there. One mounted on the top right here and then there's one just underneath that. So what I'd like to do if I think it's a RAM problem and that's again you turn it on you get a black screen and nothing happens. What I'd like to do is take the RAM out and put just one chip in and maybe put one chip in the bottom then flip the thing over and, and what I usually do is I just take the case I put the case on it flip it over without putting all the screws back in just make sure the case stays you know the bottom lid stays on there firm and then give it some power turn it on see if it does the same thing if it does the same thing then we're gonna have to flip it back over take that same chip out put it in the top one try the same thing again now if any time it boots up then you know the system is good it's just something's wrong with some of the RAM so at that point um, we need to figure out which chip is bad or which slot is bad so if if you take this one chip and you can even after you take them both out take a little uh, sharpie or something and mark one of them so you know which one is which maybe you call one no, number one one number two if you take this chip here and you put it in the bottom it doesn't boot up and then you put it in the top and it doesn't boot up then you're going to take that chip, set it aside, take your second chip, do the same thing. Take the second chip, put it in the bottom, see if it boots up, put it in the top, see if it boots up. If at any point that second chip does boot up, then you know there's probably something wrong with that first chip. Um, if it boots up both in the top and the bottom with that second chip, then you know both channels are good, and at this point you just need to replace one RAM chip. If nothing happens on any of them, then you may have to get new RAM and maybe borrow some from another machine or get some cheap off of eBay or, or you know Amazon it's pretty cheap and try a new chip now if this problem that you're experiencing has happened just after you did an upgrade to the system maybe you've watched one of my videos and you bought some new parts and it's just now happening then it's possible that you just got the wrong type maybe you bought the wrong uh, speed or the wrong type of, of RAM so double check the model of your MacBook, double check the uh, model of your RAM, and make sure that it is compatible because there is a couple different voltages, a couple different speeds, and it may fit in the slots, but it may not be the right thing. So remember to use that Mac Tracker app. I've got a video on that also. You can download that in the App Store. You can download it off of the Mac App Store, and it will give you the models of RAM that's compatible with your laptop. So if you made sure that the RAM is the correct model and maybe you're using brand new RAM or RAM that you know is good because you borrowed it from another system, then it may just be a bigger problem again. Maybe a system board problem or a, a RAM channel problem versus the, the RAM itself. So we just try to eliminate all the things that could be the simple solutions like taking the RAM out reseating it making sure that it's fully seated in there and uh, and then rebooting it and trying a couple different things so try a single chip at a time try the top versus the bottom try different ram try new ram and verify it's the correct ram those are all the troubleshooting steps that you can do to see what kind of problem the, the ram could be all right moving on to what might be a hard drive or software error. So maybe you turned on your, your computer and you got the white screen and it started to boot, but then you get the, uh, the icon that looks like a file folder with a question mark in it. If that's the case, then that's your Mac telling you that it does not find the operating system. So if it doesn't find the operating system, it can't obviously can't boot up into it. So there's a couple reasons why it may not find that operating system. So if this is a brand new installation, again, maybe you just put in this new hard drive and you just uh, tried to install the Mac operating system. Maybe it just got corrupted. Maybe you didn't get it fully installed correctly. Um, sometimes it just messes up. So if it's just a brand new hard drive, best thing you can do is probably just try to do that install again. And when you try to do that install again, and follow the steps to install Mac OS on that hard drive, I would go ahead in the disk manager and completely delete out everything 
you know, delete all the partitions, do the erase on the screen, it will say erase, and reformat it completely, and then do an install. If it's not a software problem, it could still be a hardware problem, so just make sure that this connector here, the SATA connector, is completely pushed into the drive itself. And really, that's that's the only, um, that's one single connector for this. It carries both the power and the data, so you can't get it wrong. It's either pushed in or it's not. So make sure that's fully seated, and I believe that comes over here and connects right here. So just make sure that this connector right here is fully pushed down into the main board. You can just take your thumb and push down on it and make sure that it's completely connected. So that's going to take care of the hardware. So if it's not the software and it's not a physical connection, it could just be a faulty hard drive itself. If you have one of these old, you know, spinning drives, they eventually go bad. Even if you have a brand new SSD, it could get corrupted. It could go bad. So try a second drive, you know, grab yourself a backup drive or, or get yourself a cheap drive off of Amazon and try it again and see if that fixes your problem. All right, so we've covered the power, the RAM, and the software slash hard drive. Now, it could be a million other things besides these, and it can get pretty complicated to troubleshoot, but I'm just trying to give you some of the, some of the best tips that I use for troubleshooting these types of problems. And there's a couple other things you can do. Uh, the next two things that you can do that often gets suggested is resetting the PRAM and resetting the SMC. And what those are is the, the PRAM is some storage memory that's built into the system that holds some parameters and some settings, and you can reset that. And the SMC is a system management controller that stores some settings about the, the system as a whole, you know, lights and stuff like that. So you can reset those with some keyboard combinations. I'm going to leave a, a link in the description below on instructions on how to do those. It's as simple as just turning it on, holding some buttons down uh, for a certain amount of time. So it varies by, by model. Some models are different. So I'll leave a link to instructions for that. So like I said, we're just barely scratching the surface on how to fix these things. But hopefully I've, I've touched upon some of the main things. It's really some of the things that come up over and over again for me. So hopefully one of those has helped fix your problem. If you're still having a problem... Go ahead and feel free to leave a comment down below, and maybe someone else has an answer for you, and maybe someone can help you out. So I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please go ahead and hit that like button. It helps out the channel a lot, and if you want to see more information like this, or if you like this type of stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. So thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.